Today we're going to take a look at how to find a value of one of your input sensors. Now this sensor can be either an analog or a digital sensor that you are using with your microbit. One of the things you'll want to look at is how to find a value of an input sensor document that is located in our shared Google Drive folder. Here you'll see the document that will walk you through on how to actually find real-time value of a pin that is being used, whether it be digital or analog. So we're going to run through two different examples of how you can embed this code into one of your programs to help you find out your sensor value, whether it be digital or analog. For this, we're going to use our make code learning environment to achieve this. Now, typically when you're running your program, we may be using an on start or forever loop in order to complete our desired code. We're going to go ahead and use two different event handlers today. We're going to go ahead and use an on A button press and an on B button press to help us achieve this outcome. This will allow us to see the value of the input sensor when we want by pressing the A or B button. The first one that we're going to run through is using an analog sensor. So an analog sensor is a sensor that can range anywhere from 0 to 1023. And this goes true for most of our external sensors. There's a few internal sensors like the light level that has a different value that we'll talk about in a later video. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we need to create a variable and assign that variable a pin that it's going to read in order to find the desired value. So we're going to go under our variables. And here you can see we have zero variables made at this time. So we'll make our own variable and we're going to call this our analog variable just so that we know. Now this can be called anything you would like. Typically I'll have my students call this, um, if we're using a flex sensor, they'll call it flex sensor or pressure sensor or potentiometer, whatever sensor they're using. But for this case, we're just gonna go ahead and say analog so we know that this is an analog sensor that we're gonna be looking at. Once you create it, you're gonna see that you have a way to identify the variable. You also have a way to set the variable and then you can also change that variable by one. We don't use the whole change by variable by one much, but we do need to use those first two blocks that you see. One of the first things we're gonna look at doing is using our set. Your set is going to basically assign a value, or in our case, a pin to be read when we call the analog variable. In this case, our variable is equal to zero. We don't want it to be equal to zero. We want it to read one of our pins down below here, whether it be the zero, one, or two. So we're going to set that analog variable, and under the advanced drawer, we're going to scroll down and find the pin drawer. In the pin drawer, we're going to see that we have a digital read pin, and we have an analog read pin. We'll talk more about writing the pins when we get to outputs, but most of the time for our inputs, we're going to be looking at how to read the value of that pin. Since this is an analog sensor, we're going to bring in analog read pin 0. You can change the pins to pin 1, pin 2, or even some of your sub pins, depending on if you have a breakout board or not. We're going to stick with pin zero for this example. So at this point, when we press the A button, the analog variable is going to read the pin zero. Now I can hit the A button now and nothing will actually show up because right now all we're doing is actually setting the variable. In order to see or read what the value of that pin is, what we're going to need to go ahead and do is use one of our basic blocks, show number. Now, when we bring that show number zero in there, you're gonna notice that when I hit the A button, the zero is going to appear because that's what we're telling it to do, show the number zero. It's not what we really want, but that's the first step. You'll also know that a value has now popped up next to pin zero. That variable or that value can actually be changed by dragging up or down on the pin. So you can see we can set that value anywhere from a minimum of zero all the way up to a maximum of 1023. Hopefully what will happen is when we hit the A button, it should display whatever that value is in our actual LCD screen. But right now it's still showing the number zero. We don't want it to show the number zero. What we want it to show is what the value of the pin is. So in order to do that, we can now call our variable. By calling the variable, we've already set the analog variable, which is what we're using, to read pin zero. So now, anytime I call analog variable, it will read whatever the value of pin zero is. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit A button, and you'll see that it's gonna set it at zero, because that's what my value is at this time. But if I change that value, let's change it to 728. Now when I hit the A button, what should happen is it will scroll across the screen, and we can read the value. 
Now to clean this up a little bit, one of the things I like to go ahead and do is I add a pause block for about a second. And then after that second, I'm going to go back into my basic and more and clear the screen. That'll kind of clean it up a little bit and make the numbers a little bit easier to read as you're hitting that button. Now for this, what's nice about this is as you're in the middle of a program, if we're using something like a photo cell and we need to detect the amount of light in a room, we don't know exactly how much light is being um, used with that photo cell. So by hitting the A button, it will give us real time data on what the amount of light is in that room. So again, if I hit the A button and I change that variable, and let's go ahead and drop that down 510. When I click the A button again, we should see the value 510. So that is one way to use your sensor value test to detect what the value is of an analog sensor. If we wanna go ahead and look at something like a digital sensor, we can go ahead and use another event handler. We're gonna use on B button press, and we're gonna go ahead and create another variable. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and call this digital variable. And from there, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set the digital variable. And in this case, when we go to our pins, we're gonna use a digital read pin. Now we wanna make sure that our pins are different though. We don't wanna have two different sensors on the same pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and select pin one. And from here, we can go ahead and use our show number. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this and change my analog to a digital. And I can duplicate my pause block just like before, as well as the clear screen. Now we have two different tests that we can actually run. When the A button's pressed, we're gonna check what the value is on pin zero. When we hit the B button, we're gonna check what the value is on pin one. Now the main difference between a digital and an analog sensor is that your digital sensors read in binary and they only use two different values. They use the value of zero or one. Zero meaning off, one meaning on. A pressure sensor would be something like off or on, or not pressed and pressed. So in this case, we can use a digital sensor to trigger an event without using a range. It's basically either true or false. So in this case, when I go ahead and check the value of pin one, you'll see that the value can only change of a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. It will not change or go any higher like my analog where it can go all the way up to 1023. So in this case, if the B button is pressed, we will see that, that that sensor or that pin has a value of one. If I drop it back down to zero, we'll see the value of zero. If I go ahead and hit the A button, which is my analog sensor, we'll see that that has a value of 1023. Try using these sensor value tests incorporated into your code to get that real-time data in order to set your sensors in an appropriate way.